Hey guys, Jessica Shire here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm up on the Art Impressions blog with a new card for the Coffee Cards Challenge. This is a brand new challenge theme and I am the featured designer for this one. So I thought it would be fun to show the card process video of this cute coffee card that I made using the Valentine's Bear set. So I'm gonna start off with stamping these two bears one has a heart banner and the other one is inside like a little teacup. I'm going to call this a little fancy coffee cup. And I'm going to do just a little bit of masking with that banner bear. I wanted his paw to be situated in front of that coffee cup. So I just stamped the bear using the remainder ink. You can call it second generation stamping if you'd like, but I just stamped that onto a small post-it note and then I just trimmed it out real quick with my Fisker scissors and I can pop that onto those areas that I want to be masked with my EK tweezers. It just makes it a little bit easier to handle those smaller pieces of paper. And since I'm using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, I'm going to heat set this. I didn't show it, but I did heat set it with my Wagner tool, just a heat tool, because that pigment doesn't dry right away. So if you just went in to color it right after stamping, you might smear that black ink all around your project. And the paper I'm using today is Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper. All right, so today I'm gonna to be using the Tim Holtz Glass Media Matte as my extra large palette to watercolor on and I'm using the Koi. This is their pocket field sketch box and I have the 24 pan. I'm also gonna use the Connoisseur watercolor brush. This is a size number four, I believe. I'm also gonna bring in another one that's a little bit bigger that I have. This is one I've had for a while. It's a number eight, so it'll help me do a nice wash in the background later on. And I just wanted to mention that real quick in case I forgot. So I'm gonna start with the yellow ochre color first out of this Koi watercolor set. And I'm going to concentrate that color on the bear's nose and their bellies. Well, one belly, the other one is hiding in the coffee cup. <laughs> and then to color the rest of the bears, I'm gonna go in with some burnt umber. I am watering down these colors quite a bit because I want them to be pretty light for this first wash. I'm going to add some of the ivory black to all of the crevices and kind of mix that together with the burnt umber to get a bit of a darker brown color. I also add a bit of the permanent yellow deep which I think I listed that wrong in the product list. I'll have to double check that. But that'll just deepen out that yellow ochre a little bit more too. The fancy coffee cup is going to be kept white, so I add a bit of shadow with that ivory black, just a little bit, very watered down ivory black color. And I decided to keep this as a pink, blue, brown, green, and gold kind of color scheme. So I colored the bear shirt blue, and that's with the cobalt blue hue and the cerulean blue hue. For any of the pink on this one, I'm going to add the quinacridone rose color and this is for the hearts and their cheeks and a little bit in their ears too just to add a bit of color there since i have this fancy coffee cup i wanted to make it even a little bit more glamorous so i pulled out my kiritake starry colors watercolor set this has a bunch of different gold paints in it and for this one i'm going to be using the yellow gold which is a pretty traditional gold color and I'm gonna concentrate that color on the fancy coffee cups handle, the hearts on the coffee cup, and also add a bit of character to that heart banner by adding some gold to the bottom parts. So it's like they're dipped in gold. 
I decided that the fancy coffee cup needed a bit more blue, so I added some to the small plate. And I'm doing this mainly with the darker blue, that cobalt blue hue. For the background, I decided to have it as a light gray black bottom and then more of a green on the top area. So I first go in with that same paintbrush that I have been using and then this is where I switch to that other connoisseur one that has the blue handle. It's just a bigger one so it's easier to get all of that surface area watercolored. And I'm also going to build up that color. It starts off as a pretty light wash and then I'm going to go in with a second layer to darken that up. I add a bit more of that ivory black watercolor paint to below the bears with the banner's feet and below that coffee cup saucer. So at this point I didn't really have a plan on how this card was going to turn out. I kind of decided on a whim that I was going to die cut the bears. So I just created a really quick background and for the top layer I'm using that sap green color which kind of helps tie in those leaves on that coffee cup. I also decided to use some Prismacolor pencils to deepen up those shadow areas. And I'm going to go in with several different colors and I'll have those listed on the top left of which ones I'm using. But basically I chose like a, a nice dark brown and then a lighter tan to go with that yellow ochre watercolor paint. I also bring in a blue pencil and a kind of more purple pink, but it did create some good depth with that quinacridone rose color. I start blending out some of that pencil with a white Prismacolor pencil. I also go back and forth with the colorless pencil to help burnish that in, especially with the shadows. I did wait for that watercolor to dry before I added that Prismacolor pencils to it. So once everything was done being colored, I'm going to go ahead and use a larger circle die from the circle double stitched die set from Art Impressions. And I'm going to cut out the bears so I have this cute little circle scene. I needed something in the background. So I decided to do a little bit more watercoloring with that Kiritaki Starry Colors watercolor set. Specifically the yellow gold again. And I'm not going to use watercolor paper. So since the only thing on that bears that is showing that is white is their eyes and that coffee cup. I wanted to make sure that I still had a lot of bright white on this card. So I'm using some Nina 110 pound solar white cardstock, just regular cardstock. This is heavyweight, so it will handle a bit of water. And I'm going to create kind of an abstract coffee stain. <laughs> That's what I was going for anyways. And it'll just be a nice backdrop to that circle die cut with the two bears. And then I just watered it down to create those water droplets. And I'm consistently bringing in that circle piece with the two bears to make sure that I have a nice coverage for these little guys to sit on. I found a blue. This is Simon's Stamp Island Blue cardstock. And it did match the blues that I used on my little painting pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. I already had a scrap piece of a, like a strip of paper that was in there. And I also found a pink that matched the pink that I used on my painting too, which is the doll pink from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to use the smallest rectangle double stitch die to cut out, to die cut that. 
And that's where I'm going to heat emboss with Brutus Monroe Alabaster White Embossing Powder. Using my embossing buddy first to get rid of any static cling. And then Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink for the stamping. And the sentiment that I decided to use says, Wishing you a whole latte love. Which is cute and works perfectly for this coffee theme card. So now I can start adhering everything together. For that gold watercolor background that I did, I went ahead and I ran that through with the second to largest rectangle double stitch die from Art Depressions. And I'm going to adhere that to a standard Nina 110 pound solar white card base. And this is top fold. And this is where I decided to use a skinny piece of that blue cardstock instead of that wider piece. It's kind of cut weird. I do trim off that bottom portion in just a moment. Now I can adhere the two bears painting on top of that gold watercoloring. And for this, I'm just using my ATG. And then I can also adhere that sentiment right below the coffee cup. For some added details and because sequins is just really fun, and it, <laughs> I was having fun with all this gold. I'm going to use this uh, sequence that has like yellow gold. It has more of a copper and more of a like white gold in it. Very pretty and gives a little bit more interest to the right hand side of the card. And kind of goes with the, all that splattering that I did too with the gold watercolor paint. From my stash, I just happen to have this llama sticker set and it has these pink little tiny flowers and I thought that would work perfect on my bear. If I had a pink sequins or something else that was small like this, that would have worked perfectly too. This is just what I have. For the inside, I'm going to keep it really clean and simple. I stamped the happy anniversary sentiment from the Lovebirds. That is also another Art Impressions stamp set. And then I'm going to stamp the little banner bear again on that bottom right hand corner. And I'm just going to use some light gray ink. This is Simon Says Stamp Smoke ink. I'm going to take that same pink-ish purplish Prismacolor pencil and lightly color in those hearts to add some pink to the inside also. Trim that down and mounted it onto another piece of Blue Island cardstock that I went ahead and I ran through my Big Shot with the Art Impressions rectangle double stitch die, second to largest, same size I used on the front of the card. I hope you enjoyed this card process tutorial for Art Impressions. I love this little watercolored bear scene. I hope to see you on the Art Impressions blog in the current challenge post with some coffee card designs. Remember all product lists and any other information I have is listed down below in that description box. And that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Meh, meh.